working with a chart. We've got different things here. Here's, here's something that I think, I believe, is unique to Astro Gold, which is, we've called it Chart Explorer because we didn't really know what to call it. But basically, we've, it gives you information on points in your chart. So you've got the position and speed for the moon. But one thing I think is really cool, and lots of people here will go, yes, I want that, is it gives you the last station and the next station, the retrograde station, of any planet other obviously than the moon, so of any planet. So it's giving you, it's sort of giving you extra information about that planet. So for instance, if we look at Venus in um, this young woman's chart, Meghan Markle, which um, most people will be watching this, but I'll just say that we got her birth details from a reputable source, 4th of August, 1981, 4.46, Pardon? From Harry? No, it wasn't from <laughs> Harry. <laughs> 4.46 a.m. Must admit, got to love the royals though, don't you? They post the day, the time, the everything. It's like astrologer's dream. Um, Canoga Park in CA, California. So if we look at her Venus, we see here that it's giving us a little bit of information. Obviously, the longitude is 13 degrees of Virgo. And it's giving us the latitude, the right ascension, the declination and the last direct station and we see that in 149 days it's going to go retrograde and it gives us information about where the degree is and what date. So this is a nifty little thing I think for extra chart information. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, the other thing that I don't use a lot but you can click on and get your grid straight away and you also, for those of you who do um, cosmobiology, and again, I'm not a cosmobiologist, but you've got your dial here and you can obviously kick around and let's have a look again at that Venus. Yeah, well, there we see Venus um, is the midpoint of um, Pluto and Mercury in her chart, which is where she's getting obviously that powerful speech that she wants to speak out on behalf of women for. Um, but she's also going to have to be careful. That's a fairly volatile, you know. It's good if she's being powerful. It's good if she's speaking on the behalf of other women, but she needs to make sure that she stays in touch with her roots when you've got Pluto there, I think. So, but you can see, you've got the gist that you can actually do the grid work as well. So then we come to the listings or the sheets. Let's start with the sheets. So then we come to the, the sheets, which I'm going to look at. So obviously you've got your uni wheel you've got your grid, then you've got your points list here. But some of the things that we've added since then and which you may or may not be aware of are midpoint trees. So these are not on your iPhone. Essential dignities are on your iPhone, they're not on the Android. Um, but you'll see that they're actually listed with the, the most powerful planet at the top. So her Saturn is, is very strong and her Mars obviously being in Leo. If you're into Fedaria, like I am, we look at um, the Fedaria, and under the calculations you had a choice of which calculations you wanted to use for nighttime births. Uh, I won't go into that into detail, but it basically moves the nodes. There are, there's some argument in academic circles as to whether the nodes come earlier or later in life in uh, nighttime births, so we've given the option. But we see here, She's um, in a Mars, she's in her Mars Vidaria. She's born in the night, so it starts with Moon. When she was 32, she went into Mars, and we now see that she's in, well, she's almost in Mars Saturn, but she'll get married under a Mars Moon. And I won't go into a lesson on Fedaria now, but you would then look to see, well, what does Mars rule? You would expect her to be in Venus or something like that for a marriage, but not necessarily. Mars might rule something in her chart, which is about commitment or about getting on with life or about taking that risk finally and settling or something like that. Now, one of the things I've been excited about is we've recently introduced um, stars. And um, you can, again, under that section I was showing you before, just... Um, Under here, this is where you can choose your which stars you want. So you can have stars that are on the ecliptic, the brightest stars, you can make up your own list, I think, of stars. But um, we'll just come back to that, sheets. 
So any of you who have um, picked up, and if you haven't, I'd thoroughly recommend it, The Magic of Stars by Roderick Kitson. I think his work on the stars is one of the best things I've ever read on the stars. Vivian Robson's um, very thorough, but he's very bleak. Um, I just like the way Roderick um, thinks, and he has made them a little bit more positive, but it's, very, it's worth looking at the aspects. So we, again, see what stars she's actually got, what has she got on top of, um, you know, conjunct her sun, etc. And we can go through, and if you're into Perans, which I'm not as much, you can also look at the aspects made to her chart by Perans. So I really like that feature. And then you've got some options. So if you're seeing clients where you're wanting to print out charts for other people, you can um, look at uh, what we call the basic information. So the balance, she's got a lot of fire. Look how little earth she's got. And yet Harry, Prince Harry is three, three personal points in earth. It's really an odd, odd couple, this two, in terms of their astrology, when you look at their astrology. I think her Venus is in Virgo and conjunct his moon or something. So you can see some, some synastry, but in terms of the general synastry, it's a very odd combination, I think. It'll be interesting to see what happens once the sparkle goes. Maybe that they're, they're making up for what they lack. But here you've got, um, she's cardinal and she's got fire. So she's very different to, I think from memory, he's something like mutable earth or fixed earth. Um, but you can see, you can also see the polarity. She's got a lot of planets in masculine. Look, she's going to really go get a chart, hasn't she? Now, is this young girl, young woman, ambitious or what? If you look at that basic information. I'm not saying she's not in love. I'm sure she is. But I think it would have taken a prince or somebody who was king of Hollywood or something like that to really win her heart. And here again, you can take this, you know, sometimes you have people who don't actually know what Mercury looks like or not so much um, Venus and Mars, because everyone's familiar with that, but Jupiter, Saturn, and you can give them a bit of some of the basic information still. And one we've just added recently that's not quite out yet, but um, somebody asked us for a horary page. Now this is not um, a complex horary one, but we have put together some of the things like the, um, the dignities and the, the um, the planet of the day, the planet of the hour, and the nearest saloon aspects, and think, some things that might be useful for uh, horary astrologers. The other thing that I do want to show you, which um, uh, people who are starting out, and even, I mean, I read it to sort of, rem I've written it and I read it to remind myself of the interpretations. So Astro Gold comes with interpretations on the chart. These can't be printed, but they can be read on screen. And um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of them. You can get professional reports that come, you have to buy them extra, um, that work, and they only work with Astro Gold. So unlike the solar writers, which work on their own without solar fire, now you can, um, Astro Gold, you need Astro Gold to get the professional reports. But as you can see, um, you can resize you get um, the moon, you get what that means astrologically and a short description and um, aspects. The sun, the node, you can see you've got all your information there.